cardiac output cardiac output can be calculated by several formulas stroke volume is also called as cardiac output minute volume is also cardiac output cardiac output is nothing but the amount of the blood which is ejected from the ventricles per minute or per beat the amount of the blood ejected per beat from the ventricle especially from the left ventricle is called as stroke volume and in the same way the amount of the blood which is ejected per beat per minute that can be calculated as uh, 70 ml into 72 beats per minute that is equal to that of uh, approximately 5 liters this is how the cardiac output can be calculated so let us see what are the factors which are affecting cardiac output increased cardiac output is mainly seen in the conditions like anxiety eating exercise as well as in pregnancy in the same way the decreased cardiac output is seen in conditions like uh, myocardial diseases that is heart diseases and uh, standing position decreases cardiac output because of the pooling of the blood toward the lower part of the body the lying down position can also decrease the cardiac output so all these are the conditions which decreases cardiac output and during sleep there is no change what you will see in the cardiac output now how this cardiac output is actually regulated let us discuss few important points about regulation of cardiac output there are like various mechanisms in this first is called as a heterometric mechanism so this heterometric mechanism is nothing but frank sterling's law so it is the intrinsic mechanism of different lengths of cardiac muscle fiber mainly due to increased contractility which means the cardiac contractility is mainly depends upon end diastolic volume as well as initial length of the muscle fiber if the end diastolic volume is more the stretching of the ventricular myocardium is also more if the stretching of the ventricular myocardium is more the initial length of the muscle fiber will be more lengthened there's a reason it exert more force if there is more edv and if there is more increase in the initial length of the muscle fibers so according to the frank sterling law the force of contraction exerted by the myocardium is directly proportional to that of end diastolic volume and initial length of the muscle fiber and the next mechanism is the homeometric mechanism homeometric mechanism is nothing but the extrinsic mechanism heterometric mechanism is the intrinsic mechanism which depends upon end diastolic volume as well as initial length of the muscle fibers according to the frank sterling's law but homeometric mechanism it is the extrinsic mechanism of same length of the cardiac muscle fiber so digitalis as well as uh, sympathomimetic drugs have this type of effect now let us talk about what are the changes what we will see in the cardiac function with exercise and uh, what about the changes what we will see in the cardiac output cardiac output venous return stroke volume and all the pressures are increased except diastolic blood pressure mainly in these particular conditions let us discuss about blood flow to the various organs of the body for example if we talk about brain which is an important organ for us to know what is a blood flow that is ml per minute blood flow during rest mainly to the brain is 750 ml per minute that is blood flow per 100 grams of tissue per minute is 55 especially for the brain and the total cardiac output for the brain if you talk about percentage is approximately 14 to 15 percent and the total oxygen utilization by the brain is 18 percent and blood flow is approximately with the maximum vasodilation is 1500 ml per minute so with the maximum vasodilation of the blood vessels of the brain the cardiac output to the brain that is perfusion to the brain is approximately 1500 ml per minute next is the heart blood flow during rest that is ml per minute if you calculate for the heart is approximately 250 per minute and uh, 80 ml 
per 100 grams of tissue per minute is for the heart and total cardiac output percentage is 5% and total oxygen usage in percentage wise it is 10% and with the maximum vasodilation heart receives 1200 ml per minute is the maximum blood flow to the heart. Next is the liver. Blood flow to the liver during rest is 1300 ml per minute and if you talk about uh, ml per 100 grams of tissue per minute is 85 for the liver and total cardiac output in terms of percentage is 20 to 30 percent and total oxygen usage in the percentage wise it is 30 and with the maximum vasodilation liver receives 5000 ml of blood per minute and it is highest when compared to that of majority of the organs except muscle and next is the kidneys kidneys receives blood supply during rest 1200 ml per minute which is the cardiac output to the kidneys and 400 ml per 100 grams of tissue per minute which is highest when compared to that of any other organ in the body and the total cardiac output to the kidneys is approximately 22 and total oxygen usage by percentage is 6% and with the maximum vasodilation kidney receives approximately 1500 ml per minute and next is the muscle blood flow during rest to the muscle is 1000 ml per minute which is 1 liter and 3 ml per 100 grams of tissue per minute which is lowest when compared to that of any other tissue or organ in the body and total cardiac output in terms of percentage wise to the muscle is 18 and total oxygen usage by percentage is 20 for the muscle and with the maximum vasodilation 20,000 ml per minute is the blood supply what muscle can receive and last one is the skin blood flow to the skin during rest is 200 ml per minute and uh, 10 ml per 100 grams of tissue per minute is for the skin and total cardiac output for the skin in terms of percentage wise is 4% and total oxygen utilization by the skin is 2% and with the maximum vasodilation skin receives approximately 4000 ml per minute. This is the blood supply of various organs or tissues of the body. Let us discuss about the difference between isometric as well as isotonic contraction iso means same metric means length isometric contraction means the contraction of a muscle is in such a way that without change in the initial length of the muscle fiber but the intramuscular tension within the muscle fiber is greatly increased so without change in the length of the muscle fiber the intramuscular tension greatly increases is called as isometric contraction. And what is isotonic contraction? In isotonic contraction, the tone is same but length will be different. In previous one, there will be an increase, gradual increase in the tone. But in isotonic contraction, iso means same, tone means same tone. So there is no change in the tone of the muscle but the length of the muscle fiber is decreased mainly during this type of contraction example when you are doing active contraction of uh, skeletal muscles like uh, flexion and extension of the elbow as you can see over here contraction and relaxation of the biceps is the best example for the isotonic contraction what you will see with the skeletal muscle during flexion as well as extension of the elbow and in the heart mainly during isovolumetric or isometric contraction the type of contraction is isometric in nature where the muscle or the myocardium contracts in such a way that without change in the initial length of the muscle fiber, without change in the volume of the ventricles, the contraction of the myocardium takes place. This is the main difference between isometric as well as isotonic contraction. So in simple ways we should say that in isometric contraction length remains constant but in isotonic contraction tension is the one which remains constant so in isometric contraction all increases except stroke volume as well as cardiac output if we talk in terms of myocardium 
but if you talk uh, isotonic contraction in terms of myocardium stroke volume only increases so this is the main difference between isometric as well as isotonic contraction sympathetic stimulation on the myocardium what are the effects generally we will see when there is an increased sympathetic stimulation of the myocardium there will be a positive inotropic effect positive inotropic effect is nothing but increase in the contractility so what is the predominant effect the predominant effect is the increase in the contractility which is called as positive inotropic effect so there will be a positive dromotropic effect also dromotropic effect means increase in the conductivity or conduction velocity whenever sympathetic stimulation increases force of contraction of the myocardium increases conduction velocity also increases increase in the force of contraction is called as positive inotropic effect increase in the conduction velocity is called as positive dromotropic effect so there would be a positive dromotropic effect by increase in the conductivity and next is the positive chronotropic effect positive chronotropic effect means increase in the heart rate so whenever there will be an increase in the dromotropic effect that is because of increase in the conduction velocity automatically there will be increase in the chronotropic effect that is increase in the heart rate so increase in the heart rate increase in the force of contraction increase in the conduction velocity all you will see at the same time during stimulation by the sympathetic fibers to the heart and what is a positive bathmotropic effect increase in the excitability is called as positive bathmotropic effect so positive inotropy positive chronotropy positive bathmotropy so all these are mainly seen during sympathetic stimulation of the heart and there is a new effect what we will see is called as lucidotropic effect what is the lucidotropic effect once there is a faster conduction velocity faster contraction there would be a faster relaxation also especially whenever there is an increase in the sympathetic stimulation of the heart so there will be a positive lucidotropic effect all these what you can see are the various effects what you will see during sympathetic stimulation of the heart now let us talk about important points to remember for examination the percentage of cardiac output concentrated by the renal blood flow is 25% and the maximum cardiac output during pregnancy is especially by during 32 weeks and cardiac output is decreased with arrhythmia and cardiac output also decreases during standing from lying position and now let us discuss about how to measure this cardiac output cardiac output can be determined by fick's principle di thermodilution echo that is with the doppler fick's method is the best for estimation of overall and low cardiac output and thermodilution is a technique is the most reliable especially for the high cardiac output states the most accurate method is velocity encoded phase contrast mri and the stewart uh, hamilton principle by pulmonary catheter is the best for measuring high cardiac output states electrical impedance cardiography technology is the most recent and non invasive cardiac output monitoring what we will see nowadays